Hey everybody, Diana here, and welcome back to Foxtail Brush. So today I thought I would do a little speed paint for you guys, and while I was painting, I can just give you some helpful art tips. And I'm sure most of you already know these tips, but you know, it always helps to have a refresher, right? So first of all, before I start getting into the tips, let me talk about what I'm drawing. So I was looking up cute little puppy pictures and of course corgis are adorable and I saw this one corgi doing a sploot, which is what you call that when they lay on their bellies and their back legs flail out, it's called a sploot. And so this cute little corgi with a black, um, kind of black spot on his back and he had light colored legs and face. I just thought it was so adorable and immediately I thought of an eclair or like a chocolate bar donut. So I, I kind of went with the idea and thought, hey, why not I just, I could just combine an eclair and a corgi and it would make a corgi eclair, right? It makes sense, right guys? <laughs> At least it made sense in my head. I thought it would be cute, corgi eclair, and so I went with it. So now, now that you know what I'm drawing, let's go into the tips. So the first tip I would have to say would be to plan things out. Whether that be just doing a rough sketch or maybe doing some thumbnails before you actually go into your final sketch. Anything that will just help you get a general idea of what you're going to do before you start working will be extremely helpful. So for this one, I actually didn't plan it out. I, I figured, well, Corgi Claire, I, I'll just wing it. It's not gonna be that crazy complicated, right? Wrong. Um, I should have planned it out better. I immediately thought that a Corgi Claire would be a cute kind of cartoony little character and that's what I was going for. But when I drew out the facial details, I noticed I went really detailed and more realistic. So I felt like I was fighting these two ideas of having it look really cute and cartoony and also looking really realistic. So. Yeah, I, I should have just planned it out and stuck to doing it cartoony from the beginning and I would have saved myself a lot of time of trying to shade and fix and shade and fix the face. So yeah, plan things out guys. Um, one other thing that I find really helpful, which I did do, is to use a reference image. So for this one, like I said, I found a cute little doggy picture and use that as a reference image for my drawing. Now, in the past, I have just done drawings without using any references and it came out perfectly fine. But I do notice that sometimes I'll draw something and it just doesn't look right. There's something off about it that maybe I just can't put my finger on it. So having a reference image will help you a lot of times if you have issues with proportions or maybe something just looks really stiff. Having a reference will, will give you a better idea of where body placement can be to have things look a little bit more natural and flowing rather than just a stiff stagnant image. And another thing reference images are really good for is let's say you're stuck on an idea. For example, I know there's times where I really, really want to draw or I really want to paint something and I'll sit in front of the paper and nothing happens. I just can't get anything to come out of my head. So sometimes looking up references will really help you just get ideas for what to draw. Uh, I'm on Pinterest a lot. I know Pinterest is evil, you can be on there for hours. But I'm on Pinterest and I will look up either animals, like for example dogs, or birds are really good examples because they're so colorful. Um, plants are good ones. Even fashion, fashion models, or my favorite thing to look up is steampunk models because they're so detailed and intricate and really interesting to look at. So having just different images to look at or go through will sometimes spark an idea for you to start doing some work. So like I said, if you're stuck on something, look at pictures, look at anything, look at art, look at magazines, shows, cartoons, something just to get you inspired to do something. So another thing that I should have done was take a break. As I mentioned, I had a lot of issues with the face. I kept putting on shadows on the face, trying to make it more realistic and add depth. And then I would regret it and erase it or you know, kind of blur out the, the color or just layer color over it. 
Um, the same thing here with the custard on the side. I really, <laughs> I really should have just stopped because I kept layering colors over colors, trying to give it shadow, but then maybe a little bit of yellow to look at more, you know, look more custardy. And it just kept getting more muddy, um, especially because I thought black would be a good shadow. And yeah, black just will help get things really muddy really quick. So take a break sometimes. Stop what you're doing, clear your head, and then come back to it, and maybe you'll have a better plan of attack when you come back. Uh, that's another thing with that I should have done was, instead of layering and layering more colors, um, I should have taken colors off. There were some points where I was using the water to kind of water down the paint that was already on the paper and then use the brush to pick up that color, but it wasn't picking up enough. I should have just grabbed the towel and blotted out some of the paint that was already on the page and that probably would have helped bring up a lot of that paint that was sitting there and maybe brighten it up and not have it look so muddy. So that's another thing. Don't forget, you can kind of erase with watercolor, guys. I know it doesn't seem like you can, but you can. And I should have done that. As you can see, this custard is just not looking like custard anymore. It looks more like the gray stuff from Beauty and the Beast, but oh well. <laughs> um. The other thing is that try to do your own style. I know some people say, well, with watercolors, you want to have more watery, flowy tones. And other people say, no, I like things to be more vibrant and dark and layered. Well, it's art. Have fun. Do whatever makes you happy. If you're enjoying yourself, then great. It's really hard to just follow your own design ideas sometimes and you know other people's art might look really great so you want to try to emulate that that's fine but at the end of the day you want to have fun and do your own style and you know basically have something that people will go hey that's Diana's work clearly because she does this and this and that with her drawings or whatever you know so even though it's fun to try to emulate something you know especially when you're looking up references it's it's difficult to to not immediately copy something. But, you know, just try to do your own spin. Have fun with it. Do your own thing. If you want to layer paint as much as you want, go for it. It's it's a learning process. For example, this drawing, I have to admit, I wasn't really happy with what how it was coming out. I was in the middle of it. I almost fin I almost felt like scrapping it because it just it wasn't looking right. The sh like I said, the shading on the face just was looking really strange and then the custard was getting really muddy and so I almost wanted to give up. But you know, I figured, hey, maybe I can just pull it all together in the end. And sometimes that's what you have to do is just pull it all together. At the end here, I was actually really debating if I should outline the whole thing with pen because I had been ruining it so much. And I figured, wow, pen is really permanent. If I mess this up, then I'm really, really gonna mess this up. Um, so I figured I'm just gonna use watercolor to outline. If you're doing watercolor, you don't always have to outline things. You might be able to just let the pencil marks be your outlines. And in this case, I felt that because the paws were white and it really just kind of blended in with the page that I needed an outline. So I did that. I went in with the paintbrush and just with that orange color, just kind of brownie orange color, I, I just went around and outlined things and tried to give it a little bit of a texture. And then at the end, I figured, you know, a dog floating in space might be a really cute idea, but I might save that for the next drawing. <laughs> so just to make him feel a little bit more grounded and not just a floating image in space, I decided to add a little bit of shadow. So with a light gray, I kind of went in and put a little cast shadow on the ground and a little bit of shading on the edges of his body and his paws. And I think... I think that actually helped. I think at the end of it, you know, like I said, I wasn't super happy with how it was turning out. But towards the end, I think he looks kind of cute. I like him. He's a cute little pupper. And I think you can see my face in some of these shots where I leaned in really close. <laughs> That's how you can tell I'm either really frustrated or really concentrating because I get really, really close to the paper. <laughs> but at the end of the day, I really like how this turned out. And I really had fun. Oh, and I'm redoing the jelly beans. That's another doggy term. The the little the little toes on a puppy or a kitty. Th those are called jelly beans because they look like jelly beans. <laughs> so 
that is it from me today. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and got some helpful tips and I hope you like my corgi eclair. <laughs> so I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.